Hi, all you classic TV show lovers. You're watching Way Back Machine One Classic TV. Hold on, honey. Way Back Machine One is on the air. Right now. <laughs> Hi, you're watching Classic TV on Way Back Machine One. <laughs> Subscribe now. <laughs> Thanks. Wayback Machine One. Singer Four Star Playhouse presents David Niven, Dick Powell, Charles Boyer, Ida Lupino. So this is how the other half lives, huh? I like it. I was referring to the other half, not the future better half. If you call me the better half when we're married, I'll leave you. <laughs> I'm capable of even lower forms of inspiration. I might refer to you as the wife. <laughs> nice. Part of the so-called sidewalk syndrome. Is that Kramer Cleveland over there? I wouldn't know. It is Kramer. Oh, swell. Stunning looking blonde with him. What do you say? If I say yes, you'll say I'm a cad. If I say no, you'll think I'm being disagreeable. Oh, she is stunning. Oh. Oh. Not bad. Hmm? The blonde. Not bad. Oh. Poor Kramer. His play is closing already. Poor Kramer. That's what I should have gotten you for our engagement present. A gold cigarette case. Oh, I'd just have lost it. And a lighter. I'd have lost that, too. Incorrigible? Yes, you are. <laughs> you are a tiny bit miffed because I tried to agree that Kramer Washington's doll was a doll, are you? Kramer Cleveland. Oh, well, I was close. I do get annoyed at your indifference at the things that mean something to some people. I'm not indifferent. I'm just bored. I've seen it all before in the newsreels. Dan, did it ever occur to you that in your own way you're a snob? Me? Subway society? Yours is the snobbery of a self-made man. A plugger who came up the hard way. Walking the police beat. Becoming chief of detectives and... Then studying law to become district attorney. This is real bad? It's wonderful, Dan. And I'm very proud of you. You can be tried. Well, wait till we've been married three or four years. All those little differences will be ironed out. Marriage like war is the mighty leveler. I wonder, will marriage level us? Or will one of us level the other? I wonder which of us will be the stronger. Well, obviously, the one who gets up the earliest and takes possession of the bathroom. I'm serious, Daniel. Supposing it ever became a contest of will and character between us, who'd win? The man who got there by sheer force of will and ambition. Or the uptown girl who got there because her parents were there in the first place. Who'd win? Is it important? I think it's something we should find out about before we're married. Well, it is kind of a mixed up marriage. The smooth, smooth hands and the rough, rough neck. Comes under the heading of, uh, are we good for each other? Well, I have a scheme. We start a contest. Our legion of well wishes tear off the top of some nice juicy scandal and send it in with a letter that starts with, I think Dan Morgan and Lisa Quincy are good for each other because. I'm not going to be interrogated about the stunning brunette with Haskell Beecher, am I? I didn't see him come in. Oh, I did. And we stayed? You didn't ask me to leave? We're here. Take me home. You know, Lisa... This may have happened at a very apt moment, a case in point, you might say. I have every reason to dislike Haskell Beecher as much as you. Dislike? He hurt me badly a couple of times. You've never met my kid brother, Larry. You probably never will. He's got a prison record. He stays out of sight. Beecher was the cause of his going to prison. I also dislike him for what he did to you. My father would be alive today if it hadn't been for Beecher. It wasn't only the stock swindle who broke him. 
He brooded about what Beecher did to his daughter. Isn't that the... We're never going to talk about that. Now, please take me home. Lisa, my dear, how nice. Dan, how are you? Good enough. Are you drink? No, I've uh, got a girl waiting. You can buy my lunch tomorrow. I've wanted to talk to you. What about? A couple of threatening calls I've gotten lately. Why don't you tell the police? When I can go first class? This is especially for you, Dan. I've uh, heard the happy news. We've got things to talk about, Dan. I'll pick you up at the office, 12.30-ish. Okay. You look lovely. Good night. Good night. You asked him to join us. I had a pretty good idea he'd refuse. And if he hadn't? Waiter, would you bring my check, please? Well, if he hadn't, you'd have faced it out. Because you uptown girls have a special class along with your special snootiness. Keep it. Supposing I'd left the table. Well, then I'd one points to the contest. Better discipline, self-control. Or more brazen hypocrisy, you mean. You can't defeat your enemy by avoiding him. Are you going to have lunch with him? Well, shouldn't I? You didn't threaten him. I'm not afraid of what he might say about you. Oh, I hate it. Temper, temper. Oh, I've uh, got to stop by headquarters for a while. Want to join me? No, I want to go home. All right, Lisa. stupid. Shooting me won't settle anything. You'd be in all sorts of difficulty. Why don't you put away that stylish little weapon and let's sit down and talk the whole thing over since it. How soon did you get here after shooting, would you say? Wouldn't have been more than five minutes after people here heard the shots. Mm -hmm. Anything but touched? Not a thing. Call the coroner? On his way. Well, you better start running up suspects. Pizza wasn't popular. There's going to be a crowd. I know. I don't care. Get them all in. What about witnesses? We may be in a little luck. Good. I want to talk to them. Dan, come in. Sorry, I got you out of bed. 
You didn't. I was reading. Are oh, you reading? No, thanks. Oh, just an article, magazine. Can I have a drink? Of course. A mutual acquaintance of ours lost his health tonight. Haskell Beecher is dead. Shot twice. I'm not surprised. Oh? Well, Somebody was bound to do it sometime. Somebody surely did it a couple of hours ago. Well, I can't say I'm sorry. I'm not. I can only say that I'm sorry that... Well, I'm rather glad. Why are you here, Dan? What did you really do after I left you? Did you go out anywhere? Is this your way of saying that I killed Haskell Beecher? Well, I didn't. That's a pretty big chip you're carrying on your shoulder. And that's a large insinuation you're making. Oh, Lisa, Lisa, I need your help. You didn't kill him, did you? I almost wish I had. How on? Why? Oh, did I drop that in your car? No, you didn't drop it in the car. You left it in Haskell Beecher's apartment. You were there tonight, weren't you? You're not going to tell me you weren't there. Do you want a confession? Is there one? I was at Beecher's, but I didn't shoot him. Is that all you want to tell me? I know you too well to imagine that you'd give me any more consideration than you'd give a stranger under suspicion. I can't quarrel with that. But I can't say any more until I've had legal advice. I've already shown you more consideration than I would a stranger. I've got your glove. I'm concealing evidence, and I won't conceal it long. Now, will you do something for me? What is it? Don't leave town. I wouldn't get very far, would I? I wouldn't like hunting you down like a common criminal. But you do it. Why don't you arrest me? Go ahead, you're a cop. You've got the evidence, I had the motive. You've got your duty and a great big career mapped out for yourself. Go ahead, arrest me. I don't want to arrest you. Don't worry, I won't run. I wouldn't know how. Be in my office at 10 o'clock in the morning. statement of witnesses at the scene of the crime. You know all about that. Yep. Uh, fingerprints. No, the killer apparently wore gloves. Yeah. And this report came from ballistics ten minutes ago. Yeah? Miss Quincy to see you. Send her in. Let me know if there's anything else you need. Thanks, Lieutenant. Come in, Miss Quincy. Lisa? Got two more prospects lined up for you down at the lineup. Thank you. Sit down, Lisa. Was I lucky not to have been swept up with the rest of the suspects, or uh, do I have influence? As a matter of routine, I'll ask you, Lisa, did you kill Haskell Beecher? As a matter of routine, and as a matter of fact, I did not kill Haskell Beecher. Do you want me to repeat that under oath? Let it go. I just need the point to start from. A minor point, I suppose. How nice of you to explain. Oh, cut it out, Lisa. Can't you drop that guard just once and give a guy a break? Give a guy a break. All right, all right. That's the way I talk when my guard is down. I got it from the gas house set. Now, I'll ask you another question, and maybe we can sneak out of here, have a nice, quiet lunch, and forget the whole thing. That's a nice prospect. All right, all right. Now, you didn't kill Beecher. You mean assuming I didn't, don't you? All right, all right, assuming you didn't. Then who did kill him? Why ask me? Because I think you know. It's absurd. I don't think it's absurd at all. Haskell lived in an apartment building. Several people heard the shots. Two people witnessed a woman leaving the scene right after hearing the shots. And here are their statements. I'll read them to you. I was walking my dog when I heard what sounded like a couple of heavy books landing flat on the floor inside the building. And then this woman ran out the front way. She was wearing an evening dress. No, not very long. I'm sure it was some kind of evening dress, though. I didn't think anything about it until I heard the police sirens and I came back around the block, et cetera, et cetera. Here's another one. I was coming up in the elevator. It must have been a little after one in the morning. 
Well, there were these shots. I knew they were shots, all right. And just as the elevator gets to the second floor, the door opens, and I see this woman running down the hallway toward the stairs. I believe I would know her again if I saw her. She was quite nice looking. How sweet. You can't beat us on this, Lisa. We know. Why don't you ask your witnesses who the killer was? Because the witnesses didn't see the killer. They saw you. Why didn't they see him? That's a good question. If we were so close together, why didn't anybody see him? Oh, Lisa, Lisa. We planned and plotted this thing right down to the split second. We've assembled the entire picture. You saw the murderer, but the witnesses didn't for perfectly obvious reasons. Because a man will instinctively try to escape by unconventional means, thinking his strength and physique will help him. A woman most always uses normal channels. Now, I think the killer left by the fire escape away from the witnesses and you ran toward them. They'd have had to see you and you must have seen the killer. How simple and clever it all seems. Yeah. If correct. Yeah. If correct. Dan, don't you think it's correct, all this intricate theory? It's clever and ingenious, but you don't believe it. You want to believe all this contrivance about people seeing me and my seeing the killer, but you don't. You think I did it, don't you, Dan? It's a good theory. All right. After you left last night, I telephoned Haskell. I said I had to see him at once. He was charming. How nice of me to call. He'd been thinking of me fondly all evening. Would you please come over, Lisa? It'll be like old times, remember? Remember. How I remember it. All the loathing I ever felt for him came out of me last night when he spoke to us. All of Memories. I must have been mad, but I wanted to see Haskell Beecher die. I wanted him to die very, very much. For all the hurt and fear he caused. Then he wanted to have lunch with you. To talk about me, no doubt. Dan. Dan, last night I was terrified. I, I must have gone insane. I, well, I went to his apartment. I put a gun in my evening bag. When I got there, the door was half open. I pushed it wide open. Just as I did, I heard two shots. A man came running toward me and pushed me down. He fell, he got up and ran out. I knew Haskell was dead. He had to be. And how he deserved it. I got up and ran home. That's all, Dan. Yes, Mr. Beecher got a late telephone call, went through my board. Let's see. Must be it was around a quarter to one. It was a lady. Switchboard out there at Beecher's apartment. Look, Dan, it's never been fired. And I mean never. 25 automatic. Beecher was shot with a 38. All right. Our theory does hold water. You saw the killer. Got a good look at him. Who was he? I don't know. Could you identify him at a lineup? No. Look, Lisa, unless you help us, an enemy of the people, a murderer will escape justice. And I don't care what the provocation was. He killed somebody. I'm sorry, Dan. Lisa, Lisa, it isn't easy to send a man to his death, even a murderer. I hate it, but it's the job, and I'm trying to do it to the best of my conscience and my ability. Of course. Honest Dan Morgan. Without reproach, without fear. He doesn't want to send a man to a chair, but he doesn't mind if I do. How gallant. How charming. Well, I guess this is it. The contest, the uptown Yankees versus the gas house boys. Remember our little discussion last night about the championship for you or me? Or in the nice eye of nature, which breed is the best? Oh, Dan, if you care anything about me at all, stop tormenting me like this. Tormenting you? It'll ruin everything between us. You won't face the lineup. All right, Lisa. Good enough. Your relationship with the law will be on a strictly formal basis from now on. Strictly impersonal. Goodbye, Lisa. Goodbye. Well, what else is there? I'm a cop. 
I can't go on with you knowing you're shielding a murderer. Dan, in your courts there's a saying. Only they're your courts too. Forgive me for being stuffy about it. The courts have a saying that the accuser must come to the bar of justice with clean hands. Can't you understand that? Morally speaking, I'm a murderess. I can't condemn a man for a crime that I wanted to commit. Can't you understand that? Or is it all too subtle and theoretical for you? The gas house gang may have been short on culture, but not on simple human understanding. And a pretty fair moral sense. What you're saying from your side of the tracks is that you owe a killer some cockeyed sort of loyalty because you both shared the same purpose, murder. No, Dad. What else? It's the blood bond of the underworld. It's the street. It's the ethics of children. It's kid code. No, Dan. It's let he who is without sin among us cast the first stone. Or the devil quoting scripture. It's Lisa Quincy, nice girl, saying she won't squeal on a murderer. Saying she won't be a dirty stool pigeon. Don't you see? I can't. I, I just can't. Which side are you on, Lisa? One more arrest. One more big pinch. One more conviction. One more charge through a man's body. Stop it. Then another rung up the ladder to assistant DA, district attorney. Who knows? Even mayor, governor, or a senator. Oh, there's no end to your opportunities once you've made enough important arrests. Stop it. I'm sorry, Daniel. I... It's not your fault. It, it's mine. But I can't help it. I, I just can't tattle. Tattle? Oh, so that's it. Tattle. Listen, dear, I know how you feel about informing, if that's what you want to call it. None of us like to tell, to tattle. Ever since we could talk and were able to snitch on sister, that's been the code. We didn't squeal. We didn't snitch. We didn't tattle. And it stays with us. We can't help it. And don't I know it. I face it every day in my job. But we're not kids anymore, Lisa. An adult society finds justice in the testimony of witnesses when a crime has been committed. We're not kids. Mentally a criminal as a kid. Or sick. But not us. But my hands are dirty. What are you doing? Moving. Quitting. Under the circumstances, I can't stay here. Giving up your work? The struggle? Everything? The fiancé of the chief of detectives has vital knowledge concerning a capital crime. The chief of detectives can't make her talk. That could either be collusion or just plain incompetence, and that's not what I get paid for. Now, that may be too subtle or too theoretical for you, but I seem to get it all right. All your life, you'll hate me. <laughs> then... When can I see the lineup? This afternoon, two o'clock. That's all. All right, the light dazzles them. They can't see us. Turn left. Is the man you Turn saw right. running out of Beecher's apartment among those men or not? And be sure. Turn straight ahead. Are they all suspects? Yep. Pick one or none. Number three. You sure? I'm sure. That's number three. See if you can get a confession out of it. Don't feel badly, dear. You had to do it. I guess this has been the contest between us, hasn't it? Will against will, character against character. Sorry it took me so long to face up to it. Gave you a tough time, too. But it was just the thought of sending a man to prison or maybe even to his death. 
Yes, Sergeant? The prisoner made a full confession. His death. If you kill a man, you have to pay for it. Who is he? He's my brother. Inviting you to subscribe to Wayback Machine One, the best classic TV shows and movies, all right here. Yeah, like Dean said, watch us together, both here on Classic TV, Wayback Machine One.